grateful to you for being so good to us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And we pray tonight that as we look into your word that you might continue to allow us to have your way with us that we might become who you would have us to be for your glory, honor, and praise. Help us, dear God, for we know without you we can do nothing. And without you, we are truly are nothing. And we just thank you so much for loving us in spite of us. Father, we thank you. We pray and give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you for the privilege to be called your children. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your inspired word, which is able to save our souls. And we pray tonight that you would help us all the things that we face, all the adversities, all the challenges, and even the fears that we still have as we spoke about this morning. Help us to have enough faith, trust, and reliance on you that we're able to get up and face our fears. We ask this prayer in faith and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning we looked at the fact that we are to get up to face our fears. We know the word of God tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen, somebody. And I want us to understand again, because someone asked me, you know, about what I stated this morning, and they found it interesting. And I want to repeat it this afternoon before we get into our text. Uh, but we have to understand something about fear. Fear causes one to be bound and captive. It prevents and hinders us from functioning and progressing forward in a healthy way in our own minds. Is that all right? Medically, this term is known as the amygdala hijack. The amygdala hijack. And what that is, is when you and I have been affected by our life's adversities and traumas in such a way that instead of having a more rational processing, the amygdala, the part of the brain that's primarily evolved, involved with emotion, memory, and our fight or, f or flight, uh, fight or fight response, the amygdala sends signals that our brain immediately responds to. And in this situation, when we have been affected by our traumas in such a way, uh, the amygdala becomes overactive. And it can cause us to perceive any and every event in our life as potentially negative. All right? In that way, it causes us to have a subconscious memory of thinking that things will always be negative or things will always turn out wrong. And we don't want to live our lives like that. We don't want to live our lives based on what has happened to us or what we have experienced in our lives. Is that all right? Because God is greater than what has happened to me. God is greater than what has happened to you in your life. And we no longer have to live in our fears and those things that have happened to us. Amen. Is that all right? But it's important that we get back up to face our fears. And that's why we looked at this morning, we looked at Acts chapter 14. Amen, somebody. In the verses 21 and 22, and we looked at how Paul, by his love and devotion to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was able to get back up and face his fears, sufferings and persecutions and adversities, amen, of this life, which 
seemingly has a tendency to follow us. Have you ever noticed that? Those things that we fear, those things that we've experienced that has impacted upon us negatively, they seem to always follow us. They have a tendency to always pursue us and catch up with us in our present. Is that all right? And they impede upon us and they hinder us from being all that we can be for the Lord. Are we getting this? All right. So these are things. These are situations. These are circumstances from our past, which you and I may have attempted to suppress. We may have attempted to ignore or attempted to forget about. But they still remain unfinished. They still remain unresolved. They still remain incomplete. And they impact not only on us and our spiritual growth individually, but they impact on our serving God with all of our heart. Because there's some things that we've experienced in our lives. There's some things that have happened to us in our lives that if we even think that we're approaching a situation that's similar, we won't go near it because of fear. Is that all right? So notice again what it says in Acts chapter 14, and I'm going to start with verse 19 for the text, and we'll be through here, okay? Acts chapter 14, starting with verse number 19, if you have it, say amen. amen. The word of God says, then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side, okay? And again, just immediately, just a quick background of this. Paul and Barnabas, along with those who were with them, they had went in their journey to preach the gospel first at Antioch. Then they were persecuted and kicked out of Antioch. So then they shut the dust from their feet, amen, somebody, and kept it moving. And then they went to Iconium. Only when they got to Iconium and preached the gospel there, amen, and many believed there, then they were persecuted again and kicked out of Iconium. Amen. So they kept it moving again. Now they come to Lystra. Amen. And when he gets to Lystra, they heal a man who's been lame from birth. And the people there are, are so astounded by what he's doing that they sought to worship Paul and Barnabas and not the Lord. And we looked at that, how we as Christians today, as we as God's people, people may be impressed with me and you and what we do, but we always have to point them to the Lord. We are not to seek any popularity for our own selves. Because what people will praise you for today and pat you on your back for today and try to glorify you today for, they'll curse you for tomorrow. So the popularity of people is, is, is unstable and is useless. So forget about trying to please people. Live your life to please God. Is that all right? So notice they're in Lystra now. Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium. In other words, they followed them. They followed them from those towns to Lystra. And you and I are living our lives in 2021 today, right? And there's some things still from 1990 that's following you. From 1985 that's following you. That's trying to impact on your present. That won't let you forget. Amen, somebody. Some things that are intended, if you and I are not careful and dependent on God, some things that are meant to leave you for dead. Notice what it says. Then some Jews arrived from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowds to their side. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city thinking he was dead. Is that all right? But as the disciples gathered around him, and we looked at that this morning, remember? But as the disciples gathered around him, in other words, when, when things in your life, when things in my life, amen, some troubles, some distresses, some adversity, some challenges, some trials affect us, we need each other. 
We need to surround each other, not, not dog out each other, amen, not leave each other alone to go through it by ourselves. We need to surround each other to be faithful to God, amen, somebody, in order to expect the individual to get back up. But as the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went back in the town. Amen, somebody. The next day he left with Barnabas for Derby. In other words, as we said this morning, even in our greatest distressors in life, the work of God continue, continues. I don't care what's going on in our lives. We all go through, we, like I said this morning, we all got issues. But the work of the Lord doesn't stop for nothing. Continue to do God's work. Amen, somebody. Let's not, when we have our plate full, and guess what? No matter what we do, our plate is going to be full. Is that all right? Okay. But don't allow God's work to suffer. God's work comes first. When, we, when we're taking things off of our plate, God's work in serving him should not be something we're taking off. Amen. You better take off some movies or, or some, some shows or, or, or Facebook. Take off that stuff. Don't take off serving God. Are we getting this? So notice, next day he left for, him and Barnabas left for Derby. After preaching the good news in Derby and making many disciples, here's the key, Paul and Barnabas, notice, return. To Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch of Pisidia. And I said this morning, there are some things in your and my life that at some point we have to have the faith enough, the reliance enough, and the trust enough in God to be able to turn around and go back and face. There's some things that are still hindering us, hindering our present, impacting upon our present impacting upon our progress, impeding upon our progress, impeding upon our service for the Lord. There's some things that we're going to at some point have the courage enough to just go back and face. Because until we do, they still are going to remain unresolved, unfinished, and incomplete. Amen, somebody. But notice, it's not just about us. Because look what he says. He says, return to Lystra, Iconium, and to Antioch of Pisidia, where they, notice, strengthened the souls of the disciples. They encouraged them to continue in the faith. Now, notice, if they wasn't strong enough or took the courage enough to go back, these saints would have been left alone. Who knows what would have happened to these saints? So as we said this morning, there's things, there's unresolved things, there's unfinished things in your and my life that we don't want to be bothered with, that we don't want to deal with, that we don't even want to be, uh, just, just even bring that up again, amen. But if we lack the courage to do it, there's some people that's affected by that that's going to suffer if we don't confront it head on. There's a lot of things in our families in particular that we sweep under the rug. Amen, somebody. We sweep under the rug, we, left it, we leave it undealt with, and there's people who suffering because we don't deal with stuff. Don't talk about that. Shh. Don't talk about that. And we need to confront it. What you don't confront, what I don't confront, will always have some power over you. You better be careful. So watch this. They returned, strengthened the souls of the disciples. They encouraged them to continue in the faith, reminding them that we must suffer many hardships or tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. And we dealt with that this morning, did we not? Dealt with the fact that tribulations are absolutely essential essential for at least two reasons. Number one, because as we who are children of God attempt to live godly in this world of darkness, tribulation and offenses is something that's unavoidable. 
it's unavoidable because we're among people who are in darkness. And as John 3, 16 and following says, here's the condemnation of the world. The, the world loves darkness more than light. So when you and I are reflecting the son of God in our lives being lights, we're not going to mix with people very well. Are we getting that? People are not going to like you. I don't care how much you try to compromise and get along with people. As long as you're trying to live for the Lord, people are not going to like you. Embrace it. Accept it. Be, be okay with it. That you and I don't fit. Amen, somebody. Stop trying to rationalize how people act. Stop trying to figure out why they, why they act like that. Amen. That's what they do. Amen, somebody. Sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll be thinking that you're the one from Mars. Am I the only one? Sometimes I'm thinking, when I'm around people, am I in the twilight zone? Am I, am I, is something wrong with me? Are we getting this? And then secondly, secondly, tribulations are absolutely necessary because... It weans us from the world and its pleasures for the purpose of keeping us in the path of our prescribed purpose and duty. In other words, God knows us better than we know ourselves. God knows if, if you didn't have no tribulations in your life, you will get a little bit too comfortable down here. So we have tribulations. Why? Why? We cry at night, why? We, we're up all night talking to God, why? So that we can have a greater desire and longing for the coming of Christ. Lord, come quickly. And that's why to finish, amen, somebody. I want to encourage us in the same admonition tonight that we must be reminded that we must suffer many hardships and tribulations to enter into the kingdom of God. And I want to remind us that the only way that we lose is if we give up. The only way we lose is if you and I give up. The enemy can't take it from you. He can't force you. The only way you and I lose is if we willingly give up. And for that, I want you to go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Okay, as we close. Hebrews chapter 10. And that's why we're really trying to make a concerted effort in the congregation to reach out and, and encourage people to come and not only be taught, but we need to train yeah. in the scriptures. Yeah. Not just for gathering knowledge, but for life's applications. Okay? Because the scriptures have everything we need for life and godliness. Everything. You say, well, I got this issue in my life. I got this problem in my life. I got this problem in my household, this problem with my family, this problem with my children, this problem with my brothers and sisters. Guess what? The Bible answers everything. We just got to get in there. We got to get in there and make application. Amen, somebody. Are we getting that? Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to start with verse 32. Hebrews 10, 32. If you have it, say amen. And this translation says... And these are Christians who are in a state of flux to where they're actually, actually contemplating leaving Christianity altogether and going back to Judaism. They're at a point where they're facing persecution. Uh, they're seeing all these things for the, for the first time. They've converted over from Judaism to Christianity. And it's not like they're familiar with and what they're used to. They got all this persecution now and all these things. And they're like, well, where is this coming from? And sometimes we can ask the same questions. Where is all this coming from? 
Lord have mercy. I know it's going to be like this, right? We talked about that a little bit on Wednesday night, how some of us, it wasn't this bad when we were in the world. And that's because we're on a different team. Amen, somebody. We're on a different team. We're on a winning team now. And every, anytime you're on a winning team, everybody gunning for you. Is that all right? You're on a winning team now. I said we're on a winning team. Is that all right? So he says, in order to admonish them, in order to exhort them, he says to them, think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering? Verse 33, sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. Verse 34, you suffered along with those who were thrown into jail. And when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew, you knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. Watch 35, verse 35. So don't or do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Did you hear what he said? King James says, cast not away your confidence. Don't throw away this confident trust. Notice he said, don't throw it away. The enemy can't take it from you, but you can throw it away. You see, this cast not away refers to an individual's own free will to make the decision to throw away, to throw overboard, and cast away. And therefore, by implication, it means that you lose the only thing that would have brought you safety and salvation because you threw it away. And I'm here to tell you there's nothing in this life worth giving up your soul's salvation for. There's nothing of worth that's worth giving it up, and there's nothing that we can face that's so difficult that should cause us to give it up and turn away. Amen, somebody. Are we getting this? He says, so don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. So what do we need? Verse 36. Patient endurance is what you now need or what you need now. Patient endurance is what you need. So when we find ourselves at a point to where we're at our wit's end, we want to give up, we, we don't think we can go no more, more and asking God, Lord, okay, I need to get up for a second. Can I just catch my breath? God is telling us, no, you just need some patient endurance. You say, well, what is patient endurance? It means to remain under steadfastly, actively bearing up under something, not of your own will. And that's why we say, God, give me a break, because we're trying to bear up under our trials and things that we're facing in life with our own strength. And God is trying to break us of our strength and say, guess what? Are you doing all you can do? You're, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm holding up as, as much as I can. And God has to tell us, no, you're not, because you're not asking my help. So watch this. God is the one who gives us the constancy to remain under our burdens. Okay? He's the one. But I want you to recognize something as we work towards this end. The same exact thing that the Lord uses to build and develop us, the enemy tries to use, amen, to break us down and destroy us. The same exact thing. Y'all getting this? The same trials that God allows for to build and develop you 
the enemy in those same trials are, is trying to break you down and destroy you. So, the question then becomes, what will be the determining factor as to which one of these will win out? What's the determining factor? And when we look at our life's trials, tribulations, troubles, challenges, adversities, burdens of our hearts, there's always one common denominator. You. You. When we look at all of our life's decisions and choices that we've made when we've faced trials, there's one common denominator. You. You. Me. Amen. You and I. Our mindset. Our perspective. And our attitude. So whatever, whatever's on your plate this afternoon, whatever's driving you up a wall. Amen, somebody. Let me look this way. My wife over there. <laughs> Whatever's on your plate, what's your mindset? What's your perspective? How are you looking at it? What's your attitude about it? Because that's going to determine which one wins out. We always make fun of the cartoon things we used to watch when we were kids. You know, with the little devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other shoulder. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Uh, that may have been a, a bad illustration, but it's, it's the truth. Yeah. All right? Now, I'm not saying literally, but we have a choice in the matter. Yeah. Is that all right? We have a choice in the matter. And he's saying, don't throw away your confidence. Continue to trust in the Lord. No matter how rough it gets, no matter how tough it gets. And, and guess what? We, we'll never get accustomed and acclimated and used to, to the, 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 the struggle, the struggle hurts. I don't know what dying feels like, but sometimes I feel like I'm dying. Y'all didn't catch that. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes the things that are, are on you that's so heavy, so burdensome to your heart, out of your control, and you can't do nothing about it, amen, somebody, you must depend on God. You must depend on God. Amen, somebody. So watch this. This is why he says, when I said it boils down, the common denominator is you and I. Look at what he says in verse 39. Verse 39 says, but we are not like those who turn back and away from God to their own destruction. It's easy when you're going through it, when you got pressure in your life, when you don't see a way out, when you see that in your estimation is hopeless. People are always going to be like that. This situation ain't going to get no better. The circumstance ain't going to get no better. It's just challenges. Lord, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time. Amen, somebody. When it's like that to us, we don't give up. Because we know with God all things are possible. And as Willie shared with us a few weeks ago, all we need to do sometimes is rewind the tape. Look at those things back in 10 years ago, 15 years ago that we thought was hopeless and impossible. And look how God fixed that. And God has to have great compassion for us. To put up with us because we're like, oh, no, I ain't, no, ain't going to work this time, God. And God's like, that's what you said the last time. How long? Y'all remember when Jesus looked at the disciples and said, how long must I bear with you? We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. 
You see, you have to ask yourself, and I have to ask myself, is your mind made up? Here's one thing that what you and I experience on a daily basis won't change. And that is if your mind is already made up. Y'all ain't get that. Maybe you'll get it on the way home. But no matter what how, if the Lord allows us to live tomorrow, we can make up our minds today that we're going to live for God. And no matter what happens tomorrow, our mind is already made up. No matter what comes. That don't mean it ain't going to be a struggle. But if your mind is already made up, that's all right. My mind is already made up. Is your mind made up? Because again, the only way you and I lose is if we give up. So in order not to give up, we have to make up our minds. Amen, somebody. I've said enough. If there's anyone tonight here present that has not obeyed the gospel, we extend it every week. You don't know the next time you'll have an opportunity. Or even if you'll get another opportunity. But God has been so good that he's given you the opportunity now, right now, to come. You've heard the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you heard it, do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Are you willing to repent, change your mind? You already know you want to make your mind up to serve God. But you always have the enemy telling you, well, you, uh, you, you, you don't, them, them people perfect. No, ain't nobody perfect up in here. Let me just give you some insight. We're here because we recognize that we ain't perfect. We aren't perfect. Amen, somebody. We're all sinful. And we need some help. Is that all right? We made up our minds to repent. That means to change our minds. We've confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And now it's your turn. Are you willing to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and then, in obedience, be baptized, fully immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? You can do that right now tonight and become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. And the Lord will add you, as I said this morning, the Lord will add you not to a church, but to the church his church that he purchased with his own blood. Consider where you are as we together stand and sing the words of encouragement.